Highgraph is a federated content platform that allows you to manage and distribute content into any front-end or application using GraphQL. On top of that, you can use Content Federation to source content and data from any third-party content source using universal and easy-to-consume content APIs. With Highgraph, you can build enterprise-scale content experiences for any platform. This project schema has models for asset, show, and episode. And we will create a new model for actors, add a field for a name and a biography, and mark them as required, as well as add a field for the actor's photo using the built-in asset type. We will now connect the actor model to the episodes by configuring a relation. We will set the relation as a two-way reference and specify that an actor has and belongs to many episodes. Now, when we inspect the model for episode, you will see the reverse two-way relation is automatically defined. As well as adding a wide range of field types to models, let's update our existing show model. Let's move the order of the field so description comes second for our content editors. And we will set this field to be localized. Highgraph automatically manages system fields for values such as ID, created at, updated at, and published at, as well as other user data for who did what and when. As a content editor, I can browse or filter content entries and configure what's shown to my team by default. Or I can save a filter for quick access later. We can also select multiple entries at once to edit, publish, unpublish, delete, or schedule to be published later. Let's now create a new content entry for an actor. We'll give the actor a name, biography, and upload a photo by searching for the actor. And we'll connect the episodes that they've starred in. We'll next add an additional configured locale to also set the biography in German. We can manually translate the content ourselves, or we can use an installed app to automatically translate our content into the desired language. Once we're happy with the content, we can save and or publish this content. Let's go ahead and publish this now. We see that the stage has been updated to published. When we want to continue to make changes without reflecting them on the live document, we can continue to edit, but only save and not publish. We can then compare the current draft with that of any other content stage or choose to unpublish it entirely. Content editors have full autonomy on when content is published, either manually with a click of a button or by scheduling a date and time when it should be published. As well as scheduling content entries to be published individually, we can create a collection of entries to be published as part of a release. At any time, you can view entries that are scheduled and make any modifications to the date or time that they are set to publish. As well as publishing content, you can schedule content to be unpublished by itself or as part of a release. When working at scale, it's unavoidable to have several APIs working together, sourcing all sorts of information from other systems. In this project, we want to extend our show model to include reviews from an outside API. Let's start by creating a remote source to fetch reviews from the movie database, and then set up a remote field to federate requests to its API. Let's take this a step further by also including similar TV shows, also fetched from the movie database. What we can see here is that the reviews and related TV shows will come directly from these external sources and are not copied into the Highgraph platform. This ensures that any changes on other APIs are instantly reflected on the front end without the content being duplicated or tampered with. Editors can create the content that they need to show, such as the description, as we've seen before, and know that as soon as they enter a TV ID, Information from there will be queried from the external third-party API. Now that we have some content models and content entries, and we have connected to an external API as a remote source, we can start exploring the data with GraphQL inside the API Playground. We can see all of the different queries and mutations for our content models, all automatically created for us when we created our schema. This documentation is automatically updated on any schema change. Next, we'll explore using GraphQL mutations to create an actor entry and attach it to existing episodes. Let's now query for all of our show content entries. And with the power of GraphQL, 
we can fetch the related episodes in Actors, as well as fetch images and do transformations in a single request. We can further extend our project with components. Components allow you to create content structures that can be used across multiple models without creating or connecting a new model with its own content lifecycle. Here we'll create a component for social and we will add this component to our existing actor model. And we will add fields for our different social network profiles in the component. Then when we go to edit content, we can add some social profiles to our actors. And then when we make a request to the API to fetch all of our actors, we can fetch the external links to our social profiles without the need to create and manage an external model. This all now is embedded within that single actor entry. Finally, here you can manage all your project settings, including supported locales, schema environments, content stages, and API access. You can also use the project settings to monitor your team's activities with audit logs, or assign granular roles and permissions to user groups. Here we can enable, disable, add conditions and more to content API permissions.